it's 4 a.m. And the big test is in eight hours, followed by a piano recital. You've been studying and playing for days, but you still don't feel ready for either. So what can you do? Well, you can drink another cup of coffee and spend the next few hours cramming and practicing, but believe it or not, you might be better off closing the books, putting away the music, and going to sleep. We're only beginning to understand why we sleep to begin with, but we do know it's essential. Adults need seven to eight hours of sleep a night, and adolescents need about 10. In the United States, it's estimated that 30% of adults and 66% of adolescents are regularly sleep deprived. This isn't just a minor inconvenience. Staying awake can cause serious bodily harm. When we lose sleep, learning, memory, mood, and reaction time are affected. Sleeplessness may also cause inflammation, hallucinations, high blood pressure, and it's even been linked to diabetes and obesity. In 1965, 17-year-old high school student Randy Garner stayed awake for 264 hours, that's 11 days, to see how he'd cope without sleep. On the second day, his eyes stopped focusing. Next, he lost the ability to identify objects by touch. By day three, Garner was moody and uncoordinated. At the end of the experiment, he was struggling to concentrate, had trouble with short-term memory, became paranoid, and started hallucinating. Although Garner recovered without long-term psychological or physical damage, for others, losing shut-eye can result in hormonal imbalance, illness, and in extreme cases, death. When we're asleep, our brains aren't resting. They're incredibly active consolidating and storing all that we've learnt during the day. While we're asleep, memories that were stored away during the day that are in short-term storage, that are just sitting there, um, haven't been properly hardwired into our brain, are transferred up to our cortex and are hardwired for the future so that we can retrieve that information if we need it. If you haven't slept as well, um, you won't have processed your learning during the night in the same way. going to bed earlier and at the same time every night, eating a snack like banana or porridge and avoiding fizzy drinks, chocolate or coffee, a bath or shower 30 minutes before bedtime and no TV, phones or tablets in the hour before bed. More than 80% of children in the UK have a mobile phone by the age of 12. And 90% by the age of 15. Could we get a hands up who perhaps use a mobile phone in the last hour before going to bed? So pretty much all of you. <laughs> Our bodies release a hormone called melatonin when the sun goes down which makes us feel sleepy. But the blue light from TVs, smartphones and tablets tells our brains it's daytime, which reduces melatonin, making going to sleep much harder. Even with a blue light filter, technology gets in the way of good sleep. What I would like to do now is some little exercises with you. Guy will test their concentration, short-term memory, and ability to solve problems. Just to find out how lack of sleep might be affecting your daytime performance. Most parents do all they can to help their children get on at school. Oh, I can't do it too fast. Yet they don't prioritise their sleep. 
I think what we need is, is a bit of a shift in our culture, in our education around sleep, and to recognise that actually sleep is one of the most powerful performance enhancers known to humankind. And you know, if you are serious about your your child's sort of academic performance, then uh, schools and parents should be really helping their children to get good quality sleep on a regular basis. Welcome back. It's a week since these pupils in Yorkshire were given tech-free sleep routines. All of your friends are like texting each other and stuff, and then you're not, you can't be in the conversation, but you get used to it. You get used to it. It's annoying, but it's, it helps sleep. It's meant they're sleeping an average of an hour more a night. They've redone the tests, and the results are striking. So the first exercise that we did was your memory tests. And what we actually found is that your memory tests improved by 57%. And then we did a little focus and attention exercise. And actually, you guys improved your ability to be focused and attentive by 44%. And then the final test that we did uh, was the problem-solving exercise. And we found that your problem-solving ability increased by 61%. So well done. These results are backed up by existing research that shows only an hour less sleep over three consecutive nights can significantly affect brain performance. Some amazing research showed that if children are sleep deprived by just uh, an hour, you can actually reduce their cognitive academic performance by up to two whole years. So it's the equivalent of them being two whole years behind. We take sleep for granted, but it's becoming increasingly clear that a child who sleeps well is more likely to be able to perform at school, to control their emotions, to stay well and to maintain a healthy weight. If you could manufacture a pill that improved your cognitive function, that improved your reg emotional regulation, that stopped you reaching for the biscuit tin and having the munchies in the afternoon, you'd be a millionaire. And actually, it's there. You know, that is what sleep can help you with. And it's free.